Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It has been quite a while. It's literally been a year since I last posted a video, which is genuinely insane to me because I feel like it has not been a year. I feel like I've been posting maybe every like three months or something, but it's wild to me that I actually haven't posted a video on this channel for a year. This actually might be my longest break in 12 years of having this YouTube channel. This video, the rest of this video was actually meant to be for my podcast channel but I decided to just kind of put this update on my main channel and let you all know what I've been doing and what's been going on in my life for the last year <laughs> because it honestly has been a lot and I have not put any of it online, which is kind of wild, but also um, kind of nice. It's kind of cool to just come back with a ton of updates and to also look back on my year and see all of what's happened. In the day-to-day, -day, it doesn't seem like a lot has changed, but really in a year, kind of a lot has changed. So I'm excited to be back. I originally filmed this update at the beginning of this week, kind of by accident. Well, my fiance set everything up to help me film. This is his apartment. Um, but then of course, when I sat down to film, it wasn't working so that night he was like how'd filming go and I was like oh um it didn't really work out so I'm gonna film tomorrow and he helped me set everything up again and he basically got everything working of course and then he was like all right well everything's working so I guess you can film now so that's kind of what I did and I fully intended on just filming again the next day the exact same thing but uh I had a list of topics and I pretty much hit everything that I wanted to so I was like, you know what? I might as well just use this footage. So thank you all for sticking around so much if you have. Um, and I definitely look forward to being back. All right, let's go to the updates. I feel like I'm gonna stream. Okay, go for it. You better play something in your earphones. to say I messed that up have so many updates I it's kind of like when you don't talk to a friend not on purpose you just have a lot of life happenings as a digital nomad I've met a lot of really amazing people over the years and occasionally I have one day where I forget to respond And then that day turns into three months. But then when you're like, when you think of something or see something that reminds you of that friend or you just are like, oh, this friend, and you try reaching out to them, but then you look at your text message and then you realize that you haven't responded for a really long time and then it's awkward just like that awkward note that was actually the wrong note i'm not gonna play piano the whole time my fiance actually just set this up and i've been learning this song i'm just self-teaching myself it's just like a lot of fun I've never heard my uh, Seth play in headphones but yeah so but really you know that deep down it's it's all about the the intention and the the love that you actually have for that friend and you hope that that vibe is felt by that friend <laughs> 
Um, so that's kind of how I feel right now. I feel uh, like it's been a really long time. I have so many updates that I just haven't told anyone, except if you're if if you've caught me in my real life. I actually just came back from Austin, Texas. And one huge update is that I got engaged, which is crazy because I don't think I even, if you've been watching my content, actually, yeah, I did say that I was dating someone back in February, so... But I will say that every single time that I've had that scenario where it's just kind of too awkward to send a text, sometimes like a voicemail will work, just be like, hey, sorry I didn't um, respond. I had all these life events happen and now we're finally good. But the biggest way to get over that is to see them in person. Yeah, that's by far the biggest way. One time I had this occur where I hadn't responded to someone who I really like and I actually would like to be friends with her, but I just wasn't friends with her. But we know each other on like a kind of professional basis and <clears throat> literally saw a street sign with her name on it. And then I went to like go text her and I was like, oh, I haven't <laughs> texted her back for a really long time. And uh, then I happen, I'm doing the artist way, which I've talked about throughout my channel probably since college. It's this book by Julia Cameron. She coined the term the morning pages, the artist date, and she wrote this book, The Artist's Way. And every single year, I feel like it gets more and more popular ever since I took the creativity workshop class at USC in like 2018 or 2017. But now, even now, I see people talk about it and do the program. And I'm currently doing it with my fiance. That's probably crazy if you're just listening to this because I haven't actually updated a single video that I got engaged or a photo or anything. Not not a single tweet. Not as much of a not as much as a tweet or a word or a peep. But uh, that actually kind of took a while even to tell my like inner circle of friends or just like update everyone. If I didn't get to, I might not. I don't even think I got to everyone. Mostly, I was just trying to uh, tell people when I saw them in person because I feel like it's kind of more fun that way. I met a subs. She was a subscriber. I knew her name up until this point, but um, I actually met a few people, and it was kind of cool because I was there with my cousin. He actually was a part of a startup accelerator, and so he just invited me to come through and hang out with him. Shout out to Alex. But uh, it was really fun being in Austin with him because I experienced Austin. I moved out. I was only there for like three and a half months or something, um, end of 2023 to 2024. But uh, I experienced like, it just felt like alignment, like pure alignment, synchronicity up the wazoo, just God telling me this is the place that you're supposed to be. And then I kind of forgot about it because again, I left um and then I came back and it was cool that my cousin was there because first of all his startup is like surrounded uh in the creator industry but it was cool because it was kind of like having a person just experience all these cool things and interactions alongside with me yeah so the best way to get over that little awkwardness of lacking communication which is also just going back to the basics of how things probably should be like as I get older and like meet new people that I'm super excited about it's just whoever's in front of me at the time I try to give my time attention and energy to so um the best way is to see them in person one person I did that with the professional connection type thing uh, I took myself on an artist date to the only coffee shop in my town that's like the local Anchorage um, popular coffee place. I had, I get gift cards at like, my mom gets gift cards at Costco. And so I was like, there's one location I think that I haven't been in town. So I went there and in walks this this girl, this woman. I guess I'm a woman now, so this girl, woman. And it was a marvelous, glorious interaction because then I had something other than 
uh, oh, sorry, I didn't respond. And I was like, oh, it's so crazy to see you because then we agreed that we would follow up. And then um, when I went to Austin, the exact same thing happened to like a friend who I just happened to accidentally just it was too long. But the text is just like painful to write because you're just like, this just seems so insincere, even if it is sincere. Um, and then I just went to an event and I saw her and then we picked up. Um, so this is kind of what this is. It's a, it's an update. I don't know if I dragged that on way too long, but that is actually just what came to my brain. But yeah, so I'm actually currently in Alabama. I am at my fiance's apartment and I am an engaged woman. And I actually have been getting engaged, I've been getting, been engaged since June 21st of this year. The day after solstice, there was a full moon in Capricorn. No, yes, I think there was. It was like a second full moon in Capricorn. I don't really know how that works. But I do know that I started fasting during full moons. Should I explain why? All right. On Twitter, this is a source from Twitter. I, I saw that apparently parasites in your body are most active on the full moon. So it's good to fast during that time. But I also just think... I like doing anything that takes you out of your routine. Um, another update is that I've been sober of all substances, actually. Weed, alcohol, every single time I catch myself in just a routine pattern that you go on autopilot for, I'm just like, hold up. We need to break the cycle. We need to mix something inside this little thing. I'm someone who eats pretty well, so me missing like a day even three days of fasting, it's not like a big deal. And I know that there are whatever uh, complications that can come with fasting. But for me, I'm just like, honestly, I probably eat too much. And it's not even like related to a weight thing. I think it's just really interesting to be able to fast and to test your mind and your body because you're going to be fine without going with food for a day. And uh, there are actually you know, pros of fasting for like cancer and diabetes and all that kind of stuff. But I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to state those as fact. But yeah, even for the sobriety thing, I told one of my friends from college, she was actually my college roommate, and she saw on my whiteboard like podcast ideas and I was going to talk about um, sobriety and kind of my journey to getting here and all my synchronicities and stuff that led me here. And she was like, huh, you've been sober. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, I feel like you've been flirting with sobriety for a really long time, even since college. And I was like, you know what? You're actually kind of right because I have. Because I remember uh, doing like, I don't think I did it in a college, but I did it after like sober October. Um, I would usually do it once a month or once a year for a month. But it just, anything that you do mindlessly over and over again I try to question those patterns in my own life and break them um it was funny because I went on this walk I just happened to be going through Nashville and I knew that I'd be going through Nashville this time and this YouTuber that I watched named Jill Zgurin uh I don't even watch her super regularly but I did I do really like her stuff and I if I'm in a cycle of watching her I'll watch her a lot but she was like the first person that I saw on YouTube talking about cycle syncing. So like doing different activities in different cycles of your period, which is honestly crazy to me that no one really talked about that until kind of recently. It's just like a more natural way to live life as a woman, um, as a female. She hosted a walk. And so we were talking, we were actually just talking about Austin water. Because if you go to Austin, some of the restaurants, if you're just drinking tap water, it tastes like dirt (laughs) and I am a self-proclaimed water connoisseur because I grew up in uh the you know Washington state and Alaska and I just feel like Alaska has some of the cleanest water and I can tell that because it doesn't have a taste but it tastes so good it doesn't taste like dirt like in um Texas or at least Austin doesn't taste like a little metallic or metally or 
whatever it tastes like in LA from the calcite that's in the water. It's groundwater and there's like a lot of minerals, natural minerals in the ground. And so the water, since it's groundwater, has calcite. And so the water tastes off in LA. Austin tastes like dirt in Austin. Alaska just tastes like delicious water because Alaska or Anchorage water is glacier fed from the Aklutna Glacier or the Aklutna Lake, which is from a glacier. And so we were talking about this water and um, how weird Austin water tasted and how like different water from different places just tastes weird. And I was saying that that's kind of why this is not the reason why, but I do think about this. I don't know why my brain thinks like this, but that's like why I like moving around so much. Cause like, what if one of these waters was actually bad for you? Like what if the LA or like the Austin water or even like the Anchorage water, what if the bad tasting water actually like does something internally to you and kind of affects you in some way. But if you're rotating through the different places, then you minimize your harm. That's probably a, I hope I'm not like fear mongering with that one, but it's just like a thought, but you could think that with anything like for sobriety, what if these substances or whatever actually cause a lot of harm for your body? So then you naturally want to, if you can't like stop completely, you take a break, you try sobriety. What if overeating or fasting or, or overeating causes harm, or maybe you're like allergic to something you just don't know. I don't know. Or you need to heal your gut. So you take a break from eating and then you fast and so it heals. I don't know. So I just like doing different things. I like mixing up my self and my routines. And um I don't I don't like purposely try to like travel around and like go to all these places, but I have been for like the last few years. So that's kind of interesting. But that is my update on sobriety. And I would actually like to make a a follow-up podcast or like something talking about how I got here or why or kind of my journey and like kind of the signs um or just excuse me a burp it wasn't a burp it was just I don't know um just like the little uh high fives that I've seen from I keep saying synchronicity but they're truly like synchronicities in my life of uh, releasing the burden and the weight of what was, I guess, non-sobriety in my life. So um, in the beginning of this year, I actually started reading the Bible because I have always been a very spiritual person and I always talk about synchronicity and um, like... I guess I would just say spirituality. I was always very spiritual and that became like more of a present thing on my channel. It's weird when you're making your own content versus when you're um, making content with other people because in your own content, you act however you are when you're alone. And so I don't talk about spirituality or even like religion. I guess it's like a more new thing for me, but I wouldn't really talk that much about spirituality because I feel like that's personal And, um, that's something that I talk about all the time in my one-on-one relationships, but online, it just seems like an interesting kind of harder topic to hit on, even though maybe those are the, the things that are kind of the most interesting or would be the most interesting for me. So, um, yeah, I was very spiritual. I feel like a lot of people who know me in person are always, aware of that or aware of me talking about like signs or synchronicities or things that have happened that to me are proof of the spiritual world being real and um yeah so this year actually starting when I went to Austin Texas these are these are all kind of funny because these are all videos that I've been trying to or have been working on for a really long time that kind of explain all of this, but I haven't quite like posted them yet. So they're just me kind of talking through my learnings over time, which honestly I feel like is probably the best way to make content is like genuine learnings over a long period of time instead of just uh, loose learnings that I'm experiencing like on a day to day. But essentially I had been really going back and forth to New York 
because I had an incredible experience living there for the time that I did when I moved into the content house. Then when I moved out, I was just like, well, I feel like I'm not really done being here, but it was just something I had to do on my own for myself because I was like, this chapter is not over yet. And I really did go back a lot and I really made it work. And I genuinely feel like a lot of opportunities like fell in my lap for what I wanted most, which was just to be there. And it was really cool to see kind of the ability that I had to make that happen. Cause I feel like that was really the first time where I didn't just like let life happen to me. I was like, no, I want to do this and I'm, I can make it work if I just take the steps towards making it work which is also crazy because I'm doing the artist way and week five talks all about that and I'm done with week five but I revisited it with my fiance because we're doing it together and I was reading that and I was like this is so wild because on page 94 talks about it I guess I could basically it just talks about how exactly like kind of what I'm talking about where it's like if you have a synchronicity or a sign from a higher power god and you just take one step towards that then you'll be able to see things unfold like it doesn't always have to be so forceful and like you don't have to go and like do all this work a lot of the time if it's aligned it'll kind of just happen and boy I really really have been experiencing that lately which is beautiful because for like the last two years, I was absolutely not experiencing that after a while in New York. When I first moved there, I totally had that experience and everything just seemed to work effortlessly and smoothly, even things that hadn't worked in so long. Um, But then after a while, I went back over and over and over and over and over again. And that's not an exaggeration. I have a list of all the times that I went back. And over the course of time, it just started becoming like more and more challenging until eventually I went and then I got fleas at one of the places and I was just like wow um but then a series of events happened this is my actually I haven't posted this video which is crazy because I've been working on this video for so long that I kind of took a break to work on something else (laughs) but this one's called uh I got fleas in NYC so when it comes out I feel like I've probably already talked about this. It's just been in in my head so much that I don't even know what I've talked about on my podcast or not. Um, but then a crazy series of events happened literally the next day. Basically, that was the first time I prayed. I grew up going to church as a young girl in Washington State, and then we moved. Then I never really went to church again. Um, I remember one of my friends, Elliot, Lee shout out to Elliot he tried to invite me to come to like crew at USC and it just did not resonate with me um so I really just never visited religion as an adult but I was very spiritual um but that was the first time I prayed because I was up at three in the morning with fleas it was my first night in New York back in New York uh in June middle or end of June and my feet were literally just getting eaten by fleas and so I just prayed to God for a change and I don't know what compelled me to pray uh I feel like I had just like a little little inklings of seeds planted along the way of like people telling me even who were not religious I remember one of my really close friends who's a youtuber was like I was kind of having like a little spiral and he's like have you ever considered God <laughs> And then another YouTube related friend was like, I just told him my whole story of like kind of my last year or so. And he was like, did you go to church growing up? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, I could tell you're a child of God. And I was like, I don't really know what that means, but thank you. Um, Just like little seeds along the way that eventually led me, I think, to praying. And my prayers were literally answered. They were literally answered the next day. And I ended up running into a classmate from USC and she was leaving her apartment and all three of her roommates were gone too, or two of her roommates. And she offered up her apartment, which was like the most beautiful place I'd ever stayed at and seen in New York. And I was just like the most ecstatic person, the happiest person. I was like, I was actually filming my synchronicity video. It was like the continuation of that. And I was like, this is all real it's very clear. I'm recording this. Like these are all signs. You can't make this stuff up. 
Um, and then I ended up bringing those fleas into her apartment. And then I was just like, these, I feel I completely got it taken care of, but over the course of like a week or whatever. And I was like, these, these are the, this is my sign to leave New York city. And I went back to Anchorage. I got like an early ticket home to kind of honestly to escape, but I was able to make a friend's wedding and I had never felt so much relief to be back in Alaska as I had after that experience. Um, so yeah, that was my first like answered prayer. And then I think I just kept kind of going on that journey. Then that following September, I moved to Austin with friends and we actually moved with like a huge group of friends, a big group of creators. And I really thought that that was going to be like the next group that I wanted to like collaborate with, like be in community with whatever didn't really end up happening that way. Not really by fault of like anyone or anything happening. It's just like everyone is existing as their own islands, which is very common in the creator space because we do like a lot of things alone. Um, but then I ended up running into a friend that I had met through a friend in New York the first week that I had moved out of my first living situation, which was called your mom's house. It was a content house. I met this guy, Isaiah through a friend Tejas and my roommate at the time, uh, right after I'd moved in, he like kind of looked at me with like some desperation in his eyes and he was like, I really need to find a church to go to. And I was like, I'll help you. Like, I'll go to church with you if you want. And then we ran into Isaiah and he basically was, I don't know what he was talking about. He might've been talking about his faith or his church. And I saw him at this event, the only like creator event that I went to, that I was invited by because of my roommates and I was like hey I met you in New York and (laughs) I don't know I had the urge to do that and um my roommate and I are looking for a church keep in mind I hadn't been to church in actually over a decade and he was talking about his church he was like yeah come to mine and then he ended up inviting us um and then really just opening his arms like to his whole community that was there. So yeah, I just had a ton of interesting experiences while in Austin and maybe it literally was just like the physical place. Apparently it's on the Bible Belt, which I grew up in Washington, Alaska, went to school in California, then moved to New York. And now I'm honestly going to Austin, Alabama, uh, Kentucky, like all over the place in the United States. Um, But I didn't know what the Bible Belt was at the time. My siblings had both gone to school in Atlanta. So maybe they knew about it more. Um, And yeah, we had me and my roommates at the time in Austin, like had people. It was weird because I just kept meeting people that were either were very spiritual and turned like Christian or we're just like already super Christian. Um, so we had like people pray over us and I had never experienced that. Um, just like a very interesting series of events that eventually led me to going to church. And then I took a writing course and the guy who was leading that was like newly Christian. And he was like, I started, oh, I almost killed him. Um, my secret talent is actually killing not killing, just grabbing and then um, fruit flies with one hand. One hand. <laughs> it's my thumbnail. Um, yeah, so he mentioned that he just started reading the Bible because a lot of culture, a lot of Western culture is actually just based on biblical stories. So his argument was like, if you want to be cultured, and understand uh, literature, then you should read the Bible. And um, maybe it was that. Maybe it was like me literally going to church and then I would bring my journal and like take their own notes because I'm like, I'm investigating this for myself. Um, But yeah, so all of that pretty much has led me to, I'm halfway through the Bible. And my fiance actually made me a Bible app because I was like, I would like to finish this in a year. And we got like this daily Bible thing, but we didn't start on the first. And so I kept texting him because we're long distance. And I was like, hey, what what verse or whatever should I be on? 
and he'd be like having to look through the pages and like subtract the date and um then he just ended up making me my my own personal daily bible app so that was kind of crazy so that was a really long story of me saying that i'm reading the bible but that's an update um another update yeah i just got back from austin which was again crazy alignment um and i am currently in the process of wedding planning and i feel like i've had really crazy good alignment on there too these are all like actually like 10 different stories that i could go into but maybe i won't maybe i'll just make this a nice short and sweet this is not even short but a nice little just catch up and hello um the in-person face-to-face interaction before following up for the little coffee shop dinner walk or uh meeting if it's a professional relationship so um yeah those are my updates that's pretty good i think probably jumbled but i genuinely was not planning on filming this until later while we're at it while i have you here i'll play the last verse of the page i'll probably mess it up a little no i'm not going to mess it up i might to you for this is not a gift but um for not posting for so long turn it (laughs) i saw a twitter of like how someone's like teacher or whatever told them to actually go faster than you think you should in a song when you're trying to learn it and I think that would honestly apply here because I'm trying to go too slow to make it perfect but sometimes when you don't think about it as much it actually works out better So that's what I've been up to. We're back. We are back. And I'm excited to be back. I have a ton, a ton of videos um, and things that I've like already been working on starting new. So that is pretty much what I've been up to. All right.